Hey guys, welcome back, Fast Monty's Garage. Today we're talking about oil clearance in your main bearings. It's a very critical step in your engine rebuild and you need to know how it's done, how to measure for it, so you can have an educated discussion with your machinist or engine builder, or do it yourself, either way. Now, if you missed it, last video, we did the rod bearings. We blueprinted them, came out great. I kicked a ton of knowledge, mostly because knowledge was kicked to me and I was passing it on. It was stuff I didn't know about. It was pretty fun and if you're brand new to the channel make sure you check out the first video in the playlist and that's where we tore down the engine because an oil pressure problem i had oil starvation and debris in the oil all my fault well that's how i learned now moving forward we cleaned the block we painted the block we did the rod bearings and now we're doing the main bearings so subscribe if you haven't because we're going to continue the short block process and I'm going to add some tweaks to my long block, put it back in the GTO and have some fun. So don't miss that. Now our premise today is I'm going to show you how we measure for main bearing oil clearance. You can use that knowledge to talk with your engine builder so you can determine what bearings or what procedure to do next because depending on the procedure can cost a lot of money and you want to do it right the first time. Right? <laughs> yes, you do. So let's hit the workbench. I'm going to show you exactly what tools you need and we'll go from there. All right, guys, here's my setup. Um, I, I made some V blocks on two by sixes where the V is a little bit lower than the, the diameter of the journal. That allows us to measure without moving any blocks. And we can turn this around if we want. Really slick. Um, you're going to need uh, some mics. So this is my chronometer. It reads down to the ten thousandth, one ten thousandth, and you're also going to need a dial bore indicator. Looks like this. This actually measures the inside diameter of a hole, and it tells you. Uh, it does the math for you. It's going to tell us what the clearance is. So I'm going to go ahead and go one through five. So one, two, three, four, five. And guys, if I forget, if I failed to mention this earlier, this goes for any engine. It doesn't matter if it's new or old, the process is going to be the same. So I'm going to go ahead and take measurements, one through five, and I'm going to write them down. Got my measurements, and I'm going to go ahead and tackle, for sake of speed of video, is this number three main. So let's go ahead and set up our caliper. It's already set at this uh, measurement, and we're going to set up our dial bore gauge. Now to set up our dial bore indicator, we use the mic that we used on journal number three. So I reset it, re-measured journal number three, and that's the actual measurement. It doesn't matter what the number says. And then this is used in between those two points, and we're gonna figure out the shortest distance between those points. And the way it's done is on the gauge, it will sweep like this. When you move it back and forth, and we find the greatest sweep, and then we can turn the gauge to zero. So then when we put this end into our bearing in the block, it will do the math for us and it will tell us the clearance. So let me go ahead and get that bearing in the block and I'll show you how that works. All right, I took the front bearing cap off so we have a little more room to work with when we wiggle our probe back and forth. So we also want to measure perpendicular to where the bearing splits. So we're going vertically on our measurement. And let's see where we're at. All right, we are at, if you can see that. I know it's tough to see, guys, but it's even tougher for me to see. But we're looking at one, two, three point seven five thousandths. All right, so I measured it a few different times. I got the same number, so 3.75 thousandths, or three quarters of a thousand over our target, which is over here. Where did I get my target? Well, that's a great question. So my target came from Butler Performance. They're a well-known Pontiac uh, engine builder, and they recommended two and a half to three thousandths on my main bearing oil clearance. Now, the reason that's important is it depends on your engine manufacturer, on your uh, build, your components, etc. You know, mine's a stroker motor, so that's what they recommended. So I recommend to you guys is make sure you do your homework and determine what the best target range is. The reason is 
if you were to build, let's call it a Pontiac engine, the Pontiac, the book, says 1 thou, but I think it's 7 thou, whatever the number is, it's too big, okay? 1 to 7 is acceptable per the Pontiac spec. If you were to get an engine built to the high range of the spec, you would have little to no oil pressure at idle. So that's, or even at, uh, at RPM, doesn't matter. That's too big. So as you get a more performance uh, equipped engine, you're going to have to start tight tightening your range to the lower end of the scale. That's how these numbers came about. Now, ballpark is typically one thou per inch diameter. So that makes sense here. Three inch being the diameter. So it's three thousandths. That's the target. Now we are over the target. Now in, in a practicality sake, you could live with that. That's fine. But the whole point is to try and get to our range. Now, what just happened there when we did our measuring? Well, what we did was we took our bearing cap with the bearing in it in the engine. So it looks like this and it is fully torqued down. So it is the way it would be in the engine without the crank. So what we did is we took the crank diameter from our micrometer, the actual diameter, doesn't matter what the number is, the actual diameter, we set our dial bore indicator on that diameter and then we put it in here. And that did the math for us so that we actually were mimicking that the crank journal was in this bearing set and it did the math for us. That's how we came up with that number. So this is fully cranked down. Now, the challenge is how do we change that number? Well, most bearing manufacturers, you can get bearings undersized. So say one thou undersized. Um, the complication with Pontiacs is there's only one manufacturer that does that, and that's King Bearings. So if I go ahead and do my rest of my measurements and I'm off by a thousandth, then I can just get some King Bearings, right? The other option, and most manufacturers, by the way, um, Chevrolet, Ford, I think they have, um, all the bearing manufacturers have one thou unders or one thou over if you want to do that. Here's the complication. Let's say we came in at, at seven thou. That was our reading. It doesn't matter if we add or subtract one thousand, so we're not going to get to our target. The way you get around that is you can get bearings that are 10 thou undersize, 20 thou undersize, or even 30 thou undersize. That goes for almost any bearing, any bearing manufacturer for any engine. So what you would do is you go to your crank grinder and say we're at seven thousandths. We would get 10 thou undersized bearings. That would make our reading, it would be impossible, but it would be like a negative three thousandths, right? Because we, you're using this bearing. You go to your crank polisher, your best friend in the world, right? You see him every week. <laughs> and you tell him you need to um, re-grind your crank to make sure you're, you're within your target area. So that means if you want to get to uh, zero, three thousandths positive, they have to take off six thousandths. So they're actually adding six thousandths to that number. So they have to remove six thousandths of material on that journal. That's how it's done. That's the actual proper way to do it is you determine your actual bearing size. Because if you have a significant scoring on your, um, on your crank, you're going to have to get it ground anyway. That's how you do it. And they can target that number for you. Now, let's talk about my problem. So again, I just said I have... Um, a little over three thousandths, I can get those smaller bearings. So what I need to do next is, frankly, get all my measurements down. So I'm going to take some time and do that, recheck every number, and then I'm going to go to professional and see what they say, see what they measure, and we'll be right back. All right, here are my new numbers. The reason I say new, look, I crossed that one out, and I got three and a half thousandths now because I changed the dial indicator from this one that read half a thousandths per 
gradient to a mitutuyo that reads one tenth of a thousandth per line. So that's zero to five thousandths right there. So that is awesome. I totally believe my numbers now. And let me show you why. This is how many times I measured them. Sorry, it's all in pencil, but five times. And here's the crazy thing I found. Check that out. So front to rear means 3.3 to 2.9 thousandths, and that's on one bearing. Because unlike the rod bearings, you can't measure in the middle because of that slot, the oil slot. So I measured in the front and the rear, and I discovered that taper. Totally bizarre. I took the bearings out. I put the cap back on, measured the bore. The bore is perfect. That's not tapered. So then I looked at the cap, and there were a little, there's a little ding on the end here. So what I did is I filed all the edges down. So if you do that, even these edges, because if there's any burr or um, dings, like say someone actually dropped one and never didn't tell you, you'd have a bump on there, and that would change your readings. So I did that. Be sure not to touch the surface, though. Only do the edge, smooth it out, cleaned it off, reinstalled it, and then my difference was three and a half. Look at that, how uniform that number is. Three five to three five five. Awesome. So now the other point I want to point out is let's pretend this is the journal of the crank we're measuring. You also want to measure, there's a there's an oil hole in the crank. You want to measure here, basically over here, here and here. Don't measure in the middle. So measure here to here because sometimes your crank journal is not level. It might have a taper to it. So you take your largest number between the two and that's what you use on here to set your dial bore gauge. And that's exactly what I did. When worst case scenario, and then when you're reading front to back on the bearings, you take the smallest number and that's what these numbers are. Whew. Now you're probably wondering, okay, did you take it to professional? What the professional say, Mike? Because, you know, sometimes you're full of it. <laughs> Thanks, guys. So here's the professional measurements. And this is going to be confusing. I want to explain something up front. I have a mechanical engineering degree, and I scrutinized the heck out of this. And I asked the, the builder to help me out understand what's going on here because the, there's some things I don't agree with. And here's, here's what's going on. So what they do is they like to measure everything. So they'll measure like the thickness of the bearing. They'll multiply it by two. They'll subtract it by the measurement they took of the bore and they'll get that number. And then they'll subtract the actual journal diameter and they'll get the final number. So it's 2.2 thousandths. Now, if things were perfect, that's great. We can kind of leave it there, right? But what they're doing is they're assuming a number here. This number assumes a book number. This is per the Malle um, bearing chart, which is Clevite. The wall thickness of the bearing multiplied by two is that number. Now, if any of you ever look at a, uh, a chart for a bearing, it lists a wall thickness and it says max next to that number. That's the max they can make it at. That means there's a min. That means there's a minimum. There is a tolerance on the manufacturing of this bearing. Now, I called them and I had to ask what that was because it's not published. It's six tenths of a thousandth. That means if it's made on the smaller side, you double that. That's 1.2 thousandths. That this number can be different. This could be 3.4. Right? That doesn't make any sense. So I asked them to measure the actual bearing. So they measured the actual bearings and they got these numbers. 5, 8, 5, 6, 5, 7, 6, 5, 7. And those numbers are way too big. The other issue is this main bearing journal. That is measured with the mic. So they measured it. Then they took the number off of here and put it in the spreadsheet. Now, there's a, I have a problem with that too. Because you can crank down on this. I can change this number by one or two thousandths. And that ch that changes this too. You want to do it like a you get used to it, but you do a light fit on the journal. You want to find that number and use this as the reference for a dial bore gauge. It doesn't matter what the number is. So there are two major issues I have with that. That's why I believe my numbers. Now that we have these numbers, what do we do? Well, 
Great question. Remember earlier I talked about you have to get uh, undersized bearings. And for Pontiac 3-inch mains, there's only one company that I know of that makes a one thou under bearing, and that's King Bearings. So I started the, the show with these guys, King Bearings. So I have a set of standard bearings from King and a set of one thou unders. And if you ever misplace the parts, you can actually look at the back of it. See, it says sexually transmitted disease. So make sure you, you use your gloves when you're handling this stuff. I'm just kidding, guys. That means standard. And then the one thou unders have a 001 right there. So that's how you know it's the one thou under. Now, if you have two one thou unders together, that's one thou total. It's actually a half a thou per bearing half. So if we want to take a half a thou off this number, we keep, we keep the standard in there and we put a one thou under in as the mating pair and that will give us a half a thou that's how you do that trick so i'm gonna go ahead and do that and i'll be right back i'm gonna put go ahead and make another column with my new measurements but i'm gonna take a half half a bearing here half a bearing here see what we get i know we can leave it as three one half bearing here full bearing half bearing and see what numbers we get be right back all righty here are my final numbers final answer so three thou on the nose, half bearing, two eight, half bearing. I re-measured this four more times, uh, did some more cleaning of the bore, and uh, came out with a more of a solid number. Three thou on that one, half bearing, three thou on the thrust bearing, and that's a full bearing swap. And then two seven to two nine on the um, the big bearing at the end. I don't even know what it's called. But it's it's big, right? So it's going to have a wider measurement area. So a little bit of taper on that one. But that was a half bearing. So I have a couple more things to show you on the block, and we'll wrap it up. Thank God for King Bearing having one thou undersized bearings, and they look cool. They look like polished aluminum in there. Thank God they're not aluminum, but they look cool. Anyway, one thing to note is when you are doing your dial bore indicator work work from the back to the front you can't put the indicator in this way because the engine stands in the way so you have to work from back to front and take your time don't rush it as you saw from all my notes i took that took me over eight hours to measure deburr remeasure etc etc so don't be surprised we take it to a machine shop and they bill you for five to eight hours of work at a hundred dollars an hour yeah it's crazy but worth it. And if you have the opportunity, now you know what it takes to build a Pontiac engine, take it to an expert like Butler Performance. Have them do the work. Just be prepared for a lead time. They're super busy, but they're experts at this particular engine. Now, I hope you learned something today. Even if you have an LS engine or a Ford or whatever, you know what it takes to measure for oil clearance and you can have an educated talk with your engine builder. Those of you that are Pontiac fans, next episode we are going to install a rear main seal that is one piece. That's right. We get to replace that rope seal with a, a modern technology main seal on the crank. We're also going to test fit the crank. God forbid we put it in here and we can't even rotate it. <laughs> so that's mandatory. We test it and we're going to use some plastic gauge to back up our numbers. Whoa, man, I love this stuff. Don't you? Anyway, thanks for hanging out, guys. Subscribe if you haven't. And until next time, build them fast, drive them faster. See ya.